All right. Welcome to today's um, HR Business Service Committee meeting on March 7th, to, uh, 2022, and we're getting started at approximately 5.06. So we will start out. Um, we have no guest presentations for this meeting. So we'll move on to number two, which is department reports, and we'll start out with human resources. And we will look at the monthly department summary report. Director Severance, thank you. Um, so as typical report, you'll see the staffing updates in the first section. Um, quick updates through our benefits. We have been working on loan forgiveness through National Insurance and Horace Mann for um, offering for our employees, which is also part of the federal program. It's just helping them get aligned with what they need to do. We held our first retirement session in February. and We'll be holding another um, informational session in March 10th. We have capped it at 20 employees per session, and full sessions are full. So full. the first one is full, and the second one is also full. Um, we're working on <clears throat> filling our para positions, and we're working on um, reaching out to our temporary substitute teachers, um, as well as our assignable teachers to help um, facilitate coverage in other, other schools. At the current open, openings listed as of last Friday there, <clears throat> and for contract negotiations, we do have two contracts for sure that will be brought forward to the board meeting. Um, I just was informed this afternoon that the paraprofessional unit is not, um, their vote is not final until the 18th of March, so that will be coming forward in April and not on March 4th. So this resolution, resolution HR-3-22-3874? Correct. We're, we're, so I have this now, but this is going to come forward in the in April. April. Yes. Okay. So their, then their vote will not be final. Okay. So in, after this meeting, Jackie and Brett will work on editing this, so those will come off. Um, but they're placed here as a placeholder. But okay. now that we have that information, when the final agenda comes up, they'll come off. Okay. So then, when it comes to the school board meeting and the HR, this report, we don't have to make special note about pulling that contract. Okay. Great. Perfect. Great. Is there, are there any questions? <clears throat> great, the student loan forgiveness and debt management, that sounds great, and is that gonna help a little bit as offering as a recruiting tool as well? You know, I think it can be. I, I For the district in general, I think most people think it's only for teachers, but it's actually for anyone in public service. So getting that information out there that it is apply for you don't just have to be That's a teacher, great. that it could be definitely used for that. Great. And then I had another quick question on, I know we had talked about it earlier, have we looked at waiving some of the fees um, for when we have applications for some of our jobs? I can't remember if we've talked about that already or if not. Yeah, um, for the para test, we have been waiving the fee for anyone that's been serving as a substitute in our in our facility, and if they want to take the para to become a, a regular employee of the para test. And we've had two people, I think, take oh, okay. advantage of that. All right, great. Thank you. I appreciate it. So that's everything for from HR? It is. Great. All right, so now we'll move on to 2B, which is business services, and we'll start out with the finance department report. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, give an opportunity for Simone to share a little bit more on an update on our student activity progress. Um, this has been quite the journey. If you remember, um, the Department of Education required us to switch our old site-based manual systems of recording student activity accounts that it had to come into our district system. Um, we were given a one-year um, waiver because we were switching systems. We were technically supposed to be doing this almost two years ago now. Um, and Simone and her team have been working tirelessly for the past, gosh, almost nine months, um, identifying what we had to do, working with our buildings. Uh, we had to close multiple bank accounts and all of it is running through our district accounts. So I'm just gonna press pause so that um, uh, Simone can share a little bit with um, this group and for those that are watching um, the progress that we've made and that we're almost at the finish line of this. I'm very excited about this. It's been a, a good long project. Um, all the budgets have been loaded into Skyward. Um, the revenue and expense budgets, so I'm very happy about that. And um, you know, honestly, all the sites have been doing a great job. Uh, it's been a bit of a transition, learning new codes and new methods. Um, 
we are down to we're closing one more bank and that I hope to be getting that done this week so I'm very thrilled that we can finally say this project is finished <laughs> so I, I think too you know um, it has created processes that maybe weren't as efficient as they were in the past we had a lot of cash that exchanged hands we had local bank accounts and people were able to kind of do do things without the normal protocols that a school district would be required to show and prove uh, through our audits and so I know that's been a little bit um, of a frustration for some but um, as you probably can understand that student activities and local activity accounts are one of the highest ranked areas of fraud in school districts just because there's so many people that can touch all those dollars and um, that's part of the reason why we're seeing this happening this was an MDE mandate we didn't choose to do this this was something that was required of us to pull this information into our district uh, system and make sure that um, we were showing that accountability and, and process and we continue to work and get great feedback from our sites on ways so that we can create some efficiencies um, you know working through our district accounts payable system versus having a check that you can just hurry up and write is a little bit of an inconvenience right now but we hope to create a good system so people can understand and right before the meeting Simone and I were talking about um, you know we have a lot of Springfield trips now and things that are coming up where people are going places where before they could just carry around their checkbook and write a check um, they're not able to do that anymore so it's just getting into that process of learning and understanding that in advance of an event or a field trip they just need to check in with the accounts payable team and they can get a check pre-written in advance and we can still you know we can still get those things done but it's just a little bit of a new systems approach and um, all of that is just to make sure that we can show accountability uh, to the department to our taxpayers um, through our systems and to you as school board members so um, but it has been um, it has been a labor of love for the finance team um, and I do want to say that it's been so great uh, Simone and her team are visiting every school site meeting directly so it's not just Google Meets or, or here's an email and explaining it they've been really engaged in, in being able to meet with them and ask questions and um, get some really positive feedback so and we've been getting positive feedback from the site saying that this was really nice um, that we did that so um, I think that's pretty good um, besides um, the work on um, the student activity accounts as you know we're, we're we're embarking into budget time this is um, uh, we wanted to share with you just a quick brief update on our budget uh, timeline that's coming up um, at our April 26th school board meeting will be the first time we will be providing that first draft budget uh, to the board as a draft um, each year then we will have a minimum of two special uh, committees of the whole in May to go over revised budgets and then um, June we may have an additional committee of the whole before we bring the adopted uh, school board budget for the fiscal 23 school year at our regular school board meeting uh, last year we had a special meeting right at the very end of June only because we had some issues and concerns related to um, the ESSER funds and what the budget was going to look like so we had to kind of wait to hear what the legislature was going to do but we feel more confident right now that we should be able to have it ready to go um, by um, uh, the last regular school board meeting in June. Um, we were are going to be uh, starting our work meeting with our department leads and our building leaders um, next week. Um, we'll be providing some base data information on where we are this year, how we can afford things for next year, um, we're also working on our ESSER funding and those things that were um, a part of the June 2021 uh, board adopted budget and how some of those will be rolling forward and then recommendations for uh, some adjustments into the fiscal 23 school year um, so we continue to work on that process and then um, again we'll be bringing forward more information to um, all of our leads in our departments as we move forward so uh, we look forward to that <laughs> and um, Kathy, our, that's June 19th is where we get right yes. okay yes and my hope is that we won't have any hiccups but with the legislature again we have not had a legislature close on any reasonable amount of time in the last three or four years so if the legislature hasn't um, adjourned we may press pause to see where we're going to be in terms of where we think we're going to be for the budget so 
Um, but our intention right now is to have an adopted budget uh, to recommend on June 19th. Okay. And then I just, um, are there questions? Um, Simone, did you, when you went out to the buildings, was that an opportunity to do some more education and then collect some feedback or? Very much so. Okay. I loved it. Did um, you? Yeah, and I got good feedback from the clericals and the principals as well because they, they're like, how do I look this up? I mean, I had, I taught a lot of them how to look up a budget and they're like, you know, it's all by a filter. So they appreciated that. And I answered other questions, brought those questions back to my desk and I've been going through some questions they had and correcting some things or adjusting some things. Yeah. So I thought it was a terrific experience and we're not done yet. We still have two sites left, but. Um, okay, that's great. Yes, it's been uh, well received and um, I hope, I, you know, I'd love to get out again before year end. Um, I'll try, <laughs> but for sure I'm going to, I'd like to do this at least once a year. If I can, I, I'll try and go again. That's great. I think that's really important that there's opportunity for the building to provide some feedback and then additional opportunities for education. They seem so. to really like it. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. You're I welcome. appreciate Thanks. that. Great. So now we can move on to the enrollment report. Um, there were enrollment reports that were included in uh, board book and um, I'm looking at the March enrollment students and projected average daily membership provided by Cattery Little and I just wanted to make a quick note that we did based on our last month's uh, HR uh, business services meeting and approved by the school board we did adjust our budgeted uh, pupil counts for this school year, it went from 8180 to 8005. So you can see that on the budgeted ADM column. Um, and with that, and looking at the new projections for the year that gets us within one based on where we are projecting right now. So that was based on some great teamwork and guessing <laughs> um, and projections. Um, we know that that number may continue to decline just slightly. We know that this is the time of year that we see some um, uh, unenrollments from early graduations or changes um, in the secondaries. That's a common uh, practice in the district in the spring, but we feel really good about that we're getting, that we feel that we're closer to what we uh, see as the projected uh, ADM. Um, CFO Erickson, could you tell me that first number we adjusted from what? 8180, so we had budgeted 8,180 students for the 2022 budget, and now we're uh, revising that to 8,005. All right, thank you. I have a question. Um, I have a, I'm just guessing that we have at least some students that are gonna be short credits because Pandemic, mm -hmm. and so how will that? How does that get reflected in the enrollment status? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, for students who will be participating in our alternative learning center, um, which can generate additional 0.2 ADM over and above their 1.0, um, we can generate extra dollars through that, which comes in the form of ADM. We also have access to ARP funds, which can help support getting those credits for students. So it could be that students could be generating revenue or generating uh, credits, but we may not actually put them on our enrollment system if we're gonna use another source of funding to help support that. So we'll be working uh, with multiple groups, um, Cattery Little and I and uh, Assistant Superintendent Bonds have, you know, there's, there's targeted services, which is that summer extended time, but then with all these ARP funds, we could be using that so that students can still gain enrollment without having to put them on our enrollment. Um, many students right now, if you know, they could be generating credits and once we hit that point two, we're not getting any revenue anyway. And we've been doing our very best the past several years to make sure every student who's eligible for credits gets credits regardless of that cap. So a lot of students are earning credits and the district's really getting no revenue for that. But if we can maximize these ARP slash ESSER funds this summer, which we have access to different pots of money this year, um, we would be able to support that to get those with the district without actually losing money because we'd support that staff cost with um, ESSER and ARP funds. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. And I just want to clarify, ARP is American Rescue Plan. Yep. And not AARP. Correct. <laughs> that is correct. Okay. Yes. 
we use the we use ARP and ESSER interchangeably. Um, when we first got the money, ESSER three, we went ESSER one, two, and three. But that's also if you see on other things from say the school board association or others, they might use ARP. But those are all the same to us. They're all ESSER. So that concludes our enrollment. Yep, correct. And we've answered our questions. So now we move on to 2B, 3B, which is our child <laughs> nutrition department report. Any questions on anyone that had a chance to look at? Um, again, uh, we just appreciate the work that's being done uh, with our uh, child nutrition team. Uh, we have hired a few employees, so we're excited about that, but we still have many openings in all of our buildings and related to uh, food service helpers. Um, you can see the meals, and again, we continue to have those supply chain uh, challenges here, um, as as many districts throughout the state and country are having right now. So, um, CFO Erickson, I noticed. Well, and I don't. I might. I'm just gonna stop. Um, <laughs> are we experiencing more cost in nutrition because of inflation for prices of food? So, are we making adjustments to budgets, and how are we covering those? additional cost if we have them. Yeah, so we haven't we haven't uh, experienced that. We do a bid every year for uh, our food service, so we okay. get a beginning of the year bid process on that. What will oftentimes happen is food won't become available, so we have to get substitute uh, product when those items aren't available. We haven't dug deep yet because of inflation. Um, we do have a, a fund balance in child nutrition that can help us support uh, if there's an unexpected cost for this year, but that will be part of our evaluation going into fiscal year 23, yeah. is that if we are going to see a sustained increase in cost or a sustained increase in uh, supply chain issues, we'll probably have to do some adjustments there. Um, and again, um, we are hopeful that maybe the state and or the federal government will provide additional uh, funding supports knowing that as well, um, especially if we continue to see the continued full funding of uh, those uh, type A lunches for uh, all students that qualify, um, that becomes kind of a challenge for us because we don't have that same level of opportunity to raise funds. Okay, thank you. Oh, I just have a, a question on the document itself. Mm -hmm. um, the dates on here are February 1st and February 7th and that kind of stuff, but it says the number of meals served in January. You know what, I'll have to just check with her. I think she uses the same report and probably just forgot to update that. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, thank you. You should be an editor. Like you have an eye for those details. <laughs> I'm always very impressed with that. Okay, that's important. I'm available for hire. Yes. Seriously. <laughs> and so that concludes our child nutrition department report. So we're going to move on to facilities. Okay. Well, thank you. It has been actually a pretty good month. We didn't get a lot of snow, but uh, wasn't uh, too bad. We. Did a lot of work in the buildings, a lot of cleaning effort. Uh, we've completed 143 work orders, currently have 201 open work orders. Work is really ongoing in the facilities building on the hill. We've done a lot of work. Demo is complete, renovations are ongoing, and the print shop just helps it up there. They're, they're really doing well. The, uh, I drafted this a couple weeks ago, so this is the third bullet point. Has changed a bit. We have worked with our uh, district attorney and we've submitted a proposal to Northland Constructors and I do not have a response back on the lane one bonding issue, but we're expecting to hear shortly. And the const construction tasks and master plan on the hill, that's something that we'll be doing on our own now. That could be information today. Building operations, they been doing an excellent job. All our site staff are just doing a great job of keeping the sites safe for staff and students. They're working hard, we're, we're doing a good job. We do have many vacancies and we are working to fill those with uh, human resources and their help and coming up with a variety of ideas to, to entice people to come work for us. Under health and safety, the tier two reporting is completed and that's related to the few storage tanks that we have left in the district. Uh, Matt had a second labor management safety committee meeting we saw, and final repairs are made to our uh, district bleachers. They have to be certified every five years. 
and that has been completed. Then the last two bullet points talk about the E team. We have a district wide E team, and each site has an E team, but the district team is the team that will facilitate any needs at this building at UHG. And then the worktop activities are self explanatory, and I can open it up for questions if anybody might have any. Are you okay if I add in about the news that happened? Um, as board members were notified this afternoon, as was gone out in a press release um, this afternoon, uh, Saturday Heights LLC, as part of the Saturday Properties Proof, had notified us on Friday that they would not be moving forward with the purchase agreement related to Central on the Hill. Um, they will be providing uh, direct uh, contact with uh, the, the media and others who have specific questions on their decision. Um, the information that they shared with us um, was that um, this was this was basically their what they'll share with um, community members or media is that Saturday Properties informed Palmer Realty that they will no longer be able to see a path forward to redevelop the site of the Duluth Central High School. Rising construction costs, market conditions, and city expectations create too many barriers to ensure success of housing on the site. This in no way impacts our redevelopment of historic Old Central, we will continue to pursue other opportunities in Duluth. So just wanted folks to know that um, we did meet again this afternoon uh, with uh, their attorney and their lead. Um, they shared with us how much they've appreciated working with us and that there was no one thing that caused this. So I just want the board and folks that are listening that there was just a, a, a mix of of things that happened that caused them to see that right at this time that it was going to be difficult to uh, move forward with the project. Um, part of the reason too that we wanted to make sure that this information got out was that um, our uh, property manager, um, uh, Greg Fulmer, will be working to put out information that uh, we feel very confident that this site is something that a developer will um, see as a great opportunity and uh, we want to make that available as soon as possible. So um, certainly can open it up for any questions. We can answer more questions at the board meeting next Tuesday as well. Um, but we knew that um, this was coming out. So we wanted to make sure board members had a sense of uh, what happened. How does this affect um, the master plan required by the, the city for us to proceed with our portion? Yeah, thank you for that's a, such a great question. So. We worked with Nathan Norton, who is our one of our project managers on the project from ICS. Uh, this in no way changes the process that we're moving forward with on our project on Central on the Hill, which is the last kind of the back third of the property. Um, we actually, even though there was a master planning document, um, our project and process has been independent of this process. So we have all of our um, permits and requirements through the city right now. So we are able to just continue moving forward. Um, and as a reminder um, for those folks that are listening, when uh, we were requesting special legislation and talking through this process, we did not have a potential buyer. So when we set up our process, we went into our project on Central on the Hill as if we would be going it alone. Um, we were super excited to have someone partner early on with us when we knew that there was interest and we saw the opportunity to partner as we were moving along. Um, but all along, we knew that in the event that um, just due to the complexity of this purchase agreement and board members who were a part of <laughs> several closed meetings, um, this, was, this was a fairly complicated phased approach to purchasing um, a large number of acres on Central on the Hill. Um, so we uh, continue to know that as of this time right now, we have enough funding to be able to complete our entire process. And at this time, we can also complete the demolition of Central. Any other questions? While this is not the news we hoped for, right? We went into this knowing that this was a possibility and we are in a better place now with that property than we were when this first happened. So while I am disappointed, I um, have incredible respect and confidence in the team. As we move forward, we protected ourselves as we went into this process for this possibility. 
and um, we'll just move onward and upward. And as we've said, it doesn't affect what happened at Fox. So again, while it's not great, we'll just yeah. keep trucking. And for those that are listening, I know it can be complicated. Historic Central or Hawks as we like to call it, we met as we were visiting with um, the Saturday team today. They are moving forward on that process. It sounds like construction will be starting within a month or two um, and they're gonna be starting to do the interior processes there. So this doesn't have any effect on that project down there for them. They are invested in Duluth. Um, they are excited about moving forward with that. Um, but as was shared, this was a uh, a much larger, much more complicated process. And um, all along, we knew that there was, um, you know, potential hiccups along the way. But thank you for saying um, our team is really amazing. And we have really smart people who thought through a lot of these yeah. different pieces. And so um, I think we're as poised as we can be. Um, and we continue to look forward to moving forward on our project. Yeah, our project is going to move to completion. We protected ourselves through this entire process to make sure we were serving students and kids. We'll just move on and work with the next interested party. Absolutely. Great. Are there any other questions? Great. So let's see. I need to regroup after <laughs> So we have concluded our facility department report, and now we're going to move on to our technology department. Welcome, Bart. Thank you. Um, as you can see, the numbers for cybersecurity are very similar last month. This wasn't a whole month of February. I think they reported it early to uh, Jeffrey and Brent. Um, uh, under the great bids, uh, it's been 1,300. Um, that you'll be reviewing a little bit later. In this meeting, uh, I believe the price was the awarded bid was eight hundred and sixty-four thousand dollars CWG. Uh, that have that help desk tickets for that portion of the month. We had four hundred eight new tickets, three hundred fifty-four tickets were resolved, four hundred thirty-three tickets were unresolved. Uh, the first response from my team to those end users was fifteen hours, and that average resolution time for last month was seventy-three hours. The projects uh, that CDWG uh, White Oaks Validation Site Survey, it was on hold until a lot of good news we heard about the mass in our school district. So I'm looking at having that rescheduled for the end of the month to get their team in to review, visit every one of our classrooms and every one of our district sites to take a look at uh, our existing wireless access points and any interference that's happening um, in our buildings. So, um, Bloom Turney Brothers, is, uh, right now I'm waiting to receive uh, the 80 cable space plates uh, for the smart boards before they can actually schedule the time to install them. So we have pretty much all the parts except for all the 80 cabling and the base plates. And until they receive that, they can't installations. Other questions? Do you know how long that's going to take? Is it going to be months or is it every weeks? I am hoping weeks, but I've been emailing them weekly for the last three weeks. They were up during the break. I emailed them last week and, and I haven't really received a response. So I'm thinking it's a supply chain that they're just hoping that they just show up and they say, aren't they there? So just, yeah. And is the wireless validation survey will that do anything to improve cell phone service in some buildings? It, it will not, it's just for our wireless. I know there's some other things that we're looking at potentially. I know some of the schools don't have any cell phone Okay. And I think they're important in this day and age when an emergency Bart, so for the wire valid validation survey, is that also so that's looking to improve the wireless access at all the different correct and, and if there's deficiencies found then do we have capacity to be able to fix those deficiencies uh it would we'd have to be looking at a bunch of that yeah that's what i was wondering if depending on what we find if we have to keep this in mind yeah. um as we think about budgeting okay so we do have the capabilities in each of our classrooms we do have a wireless access point and i think we have a school of cable 15 feet 
So it might be just moving it from you know the center of the room to the hallway or to somewhere else in the room to help some of them. But some of them might be oh we need one in the hallway or we need one down the hallway, so we may have to put additional cable and stuff to address those. And then with this, and we're pretty good with capacity on our wireless. We can support what we're gonna. Uh, we haven't seen any capacity issues. Okay. Um, we've seen some issues uh, for um, density issues, where they'll try to have too many people in an area, like yeah. in the media center. So we run into some of those, but not so much in the classroom. The All right, because I suppose some of these conversations, as we invest more and more technology, we have to start, it's almost like long-term facility planning. It really is like thinking about the difference is the life of some of this is like this compared to when we build buildings. We have a great couple spreadsheets out there right now and our team's working on um, short-term, mid-range, and long-term yeah. uh, cycles. And um, it's gonna be a really, really important question as we're phasing out of ESSER and phasing out of our processes to determine, um, you know, how does this fit in with yeah. our strategic planning and our yearly budgeting? Um, I think we're we're able to provide some great resources right now, but knowing that um, we have have regular conversations about what that means past 2023, yeah, um, is going to be really critically important. Thank you. Sorry, we have any. Um, any like stations or capability for people to hardwire their computers? Um, should they have wireless problems or not? We have uh, our desktops pretty much for the district, but we don't, we don't have the wireless. We have Chromebooks for our three through twelve. I guess I'm talking more than for staff. Or for staff, uh, we don't have that capability um, just because it's a security risk. Okay. So we. We would never know what's on that device that they would bring in. So it's real you know, security risk by allowing stuff like that. Ah, security. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've been talking about technology security all day on and off today. So we have we have a budget for ransomware, right? <laughs> we have we have an in, we have an insurance sure. policy. That's <laughs> not reassuring at all. No, okay. that's and, and for all the hoops we had to go through to get that policy, um, you could tell that this is becoming a, a more and more uh, important consideration for all municipalities, especially school districts that have so many people on their network. And I think we should have a moment of silence for former member Trinka, because she would be happy oh. we were having this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> so um, uh, we're finished with the Technology Department Report, thank you, Bart, and we'll move on to the Transportation Department Report. Yeah, so there's just some uh, bullet points here from uh, Steve Johnson and his team, just wanting to let folks know that um, one of the things that happened March 1st was the reinstatement of field trips and other activities, so that's going to mean um, more opportunity for our transportation teams to uh, coordinate and do those things. Um, as has been shared, um, we are at the uh, precipice of staffing. We continue to have enough staff to do the things we have to do, but we do not currently have excess staff. So we've been working with uh, our buildings and our leaders and our department leaders to say that as long as we can, uh, as long as we have the staff to do the work, we'll do the work. So uh, we look forward to partnering with that. Um, just wanting to, to share. And then uh, when this report was written, we were still in the mask mandate, but we have notified uh, bus drivers and our uh, third party vendor Voyager that um, we are using the protocol that was shared uh, with staff and the public last Friday um, in relation to being under low transmission right now that uh, masks will not be required on, on school buses right now. So we're excited about that. Uh, and we continue to just uh, have our same opportunities and challenges in just making sure that you know we can keep our buses running and keeping getting our students to school. Um, and then um, there's some, uh, at the last bullet that uh, Steve shares, we have some other um, uh, 
issues for our drivers to make sure that we're going through some training processes and we're working through that. Great. Are there any questions on the transportation report? Great. So now we move on to the consent agenda. And can I press pause? Just yes. <laughs> so um, Member Oswald had had shared with us um, after having some training with MSBA and her clerk's training regarding the utilization of a consent agenda for certain items that we currently have on the consent that probably need to be in a individual vote format when we get to the regular school board meeting. Um, and with the transition of um, Jackie Dolenz to Brett, we just didn't, uh, we talked about it internally and we talked about how we could restructure this, uh, this agenda to keep all the items on the agenda, but that they would just be separate line items and rather than having that consent heading there. So um, we'll continue to, we'll get that done and I apologize for <laughs> the hiccup there, but there will be things that will, based on the um, recommendations that we got from MSBA, they'll just shift out of this agenda into individual motions and consent. Because there's there are things on the consent agenda that may remain on the consent agenda. There's just things like resolutions that will need individual votes. Okay. Just a comment for the board and for anyone else that that information was was just shared, you know, 15 minutes before the meeting, and so the structure of the agenda. Oh, you mean the, the the resolution? The, the related the, to, or the the information yeah. related to consent agenda. So that, there it wasn't time to yeah, shift it. We can shift it. Okay. Yep. okay. We got it. Really and early. thank you so much for the support mm -hmm. and information. Um, you know, I think for those of us that. You know, I looked back, and we haven't had a we haven't had a consent agenda that hasn't been unanimous since we started consent agendas. So technically, everything falls under, you know, making sure that there's majorities and super majorities and those type of things. But um, good process is good, and we yeah. need to adjust from there. So we appreciate that. So for this number three, when we move, when I am I going to have to make a change to the committee report then as I give it at the school board meeting can we yep. have we'll, that conversation we'll meet, and i think okay. we'll keep it in the same order but what we'll do is we'll just put headings on whether it's consent or special perfect so okay. it, it will stay in the same order i i just want to talk about a little bit about what i learned is that um, the recommendation from msba is that um, no resolutions be on a consent agenda because you always want to at least give a summary of what a resolution is and there are certain resolutions that do require special votes and, and special voting platforms and you can't be reassured that that happened necessarily um, and yeah. it's not as transparent to the public and it, it's always good to um, at least tell people what we're voting on and why we're voting on it that sort of thing um, for the community to know because right now they just know that we we vote on an agenda and you know they don't know necessarily what we're voting on yeah. so. thank you member Oswald that's very helpful because good process is important we we do and and um i think depending on how different things get reported i think we have all the discussion here at the committee level so that we've had the process and the feedback and the conversations about things that we bring forward that you know always the intent of a consent agenda is non-controversial items that's the whole intent and how we specifically have put in there that in the event that there's anything a board member wants to discuss or wants to have conversation about that could be pulled off at any time. And we've had a few instances since we've started the consent process where items have been pulled, but again, we support um, the adjustment and change. Yeah, thank you. So as we go through the consent agenda, we see we have the HR staffing report and do we have anything, do we discuss this or do we, we unless just know any, that it's attached? Yeah, or, any, yeah. unless there's specific questions, usually we just, it's a it's a performer. performer. Okay. So. Yep. So then we will move on to. Let me just make it. And then we have the under three B. We have a financial report and a budget revision. And this budget re revision, I'm assuming, is it. I am assuming that is attached back to that revised ADM, so that you can find how we've looked at our ADM and how we've reflected that in our budget re revision for this year. Correct. Okay. Um, next, move on to, then we have our fundraisers, and we will put those, will still remain on the consent agenda, and we've had a fundraiser with Ordeen East, and they raised monies to be used for flexible seating, wobble chairs, and balance balls, so that's great. So that's our fundraising. 
Now we move on to three C's, which is bids, RFP, and quotes. And um, Bart, this is the bid I think you were referencing earlier in the technology yes. section. And so this bid right here is from this bid. And so this will be something that we will have to approve at the March school board meeting. And this bid um, is whole from CDW government, and it is a bid for 852,850. So you were close. You said 864, 64. right? Yeah. Pretty close. And so um, we will see this back on our consent agenda for the March school board meeting. Great. Okay. <clears throat> Then when we come down to contracts, change in orders, leases, we have none there. Come down to resol resolution, this is where we are looking at our resolution. So we'll pull these out of the consent agenda and vote on them separately at the March school board meeting. We will put all the resolutions as special on this upcoming March meeting. Okay, great. So we have two resolutions. One for the um, Education Minnesota Integration Specialist. So we have come to an agreement on that contract. Take a minute and say, yes, good job, everybody. Can't wait for that teacher one to come through, right? And then the next one we have is resolution for the food service employees that we have a settled contract with them as well. And then we will move the paraprofessionals if that contract is approved. That will come to us in the April meeting. My understanding that the teacher's contract and then their vote next week yeah. will, will come. Oh, that'll April be in April. Great. I believe their vote is on the 17th. Oh, great. Okay. If I could just say how much work Teresa and her yeah. resources team have done, I just, I'm, it's been great. And just um, our teams have been really grateful. The collaboration and coordination of working with our bargaining units and um, really listening to um, some ways in which we can make some uh, good difference. I, I just am just been really grateful and um, I just, we're lucky to have Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. We are very lucky to have you. It's been, when did you come on to the team? November 1st. <laughs> Seems like years ago. Yeah, <laughs> <Right>. it does. <laughs> I bet. Seriously. That's great. Okay, so we've gone through these contracts. That went off, and now we um, move on to some miscellane miscellaneous. Oh, the acceptance of the donations. I'm sorry. And so we will. This will stay on the consent agenda. And no, we have. This will be a special resolution. This will be a to yep. acceptance. Okay. Yep. This That's is an actual good. resolution. Don't know if anyone had any questions on. This is kind of a lull time um, of the year for donations. A lot of times we see them at the beginning of the school year. Um, this one, and as I share in other meetings, um, these come from the sites, and so sometimes all the sites will um, take like a specific month and put a whole bunch of donations from the last couple months. So you'll see some months have a whole ton of them, and then others that it's a smaller group of donations. Yeah, that makes sense because it's in the special. <clears throat> and then now we move on to miscellaneous informational items. We have the district property update, and we've had that update. Yep, okay. that was provided by Nathan Norton. It's in your packet, and it's just kind of just the upcoming and um, recent progress on on the the projects we have here in the district. Yeah. And then our expenditure contracts. Um, we did have just a few expenditure contracts this month um, and again as a reminder for those that are reading those when you see that asterisk next to the amount it's an up to amount that doesn't mean that we're spending that entire amount um, we do have an occasion um, where there might be needing an amendment if they need to go over that amount and then that expenditure contract comes back to the board for additional review so you might see that on a future meeting we do try to provide um, enough information so you know what uh, department or contact source and whether or not um, it's department restricted, whether it's restricted because of um, uh, funding sources and then a general description. And then 
no cost contracts. We did not have it. Uh, yeah. Did we have one no cost contract? Yes. Thanks. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. This was just an extension of um, of an MOU to just change the date. So it was um, just a re it's the same. It's an agreement we've already approved, but uh, they asked for a, a date extension. <clears throat> and then grant applications. We have one grant application. We do. Um, Lincoln uh, Park. Yep. And um, even though. This went to this went to press. Um, we already heard from Project Joy that they got the grant, so you'll oh. see that on the April board meeting. That's great. <laughs> so that will come next month. So I believe there's no business after that, correct? That is correct. All right. So uh, that concludes our March business and hold on, what are we calling it? HR and Business Services Committee. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Thank you. And again, my apologies for being late. Oh.